No, the problem is I can't use an iPad because I lean on it and then all the shit goes away it and it gets deleted. It's digital bullshit. And as much as I want, like, I remember getting it thinking I was going to be rich. Do you ever get something where yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, no. where you're I mean, like, my, I'm going to be My laptop rich. that's now broken. I thought I was making, like, a very serious investment because I had, it was, it was during the pandemic. Yeah. I was laid off, so I was getting double unemployment and whatever stimulus Man, checks on top of that were being sent through. In. The thing is, I wasn't technically making more money than I was when I was working. But because I didn't drive anywhere, I wasn't yeah. like eating normally. Like everything was just going right in. I was just right playing in. video games and listening to podcasts. Straight up. So I had just like in excess of cash, and so I was like, okay, you know, I might not be able to get a job anymore because like I do marketing, and everyone that did my job got fired. Because like if you're afraid your business is gonna go on, yeah. the first thing you fire is like the guys the who auxiliary aren't very good at their jobs. Basically. I'm like, pretty good. Is that what I'm, you're saying? I was pretty good at my yeah. job, uh, but it's not a essential business function. Sure, you know. So you thought getting a even, and I'm I'm sending out job applications. You like were applying every, for jobs constantly. I was, <laughs> dude, I was. <laughs> I was not. Okay. So, is that what you should have been doing during the before, pandemic? Before before the pandemic, oh, I was oh. like a uh, like a dick, like a business guy. I thought you, know? you were gonna like, say addicted. No, no, no. But like, no, I was just a you were a just a dick. Fag. You were a faggot. Yeah. Okay. I was like a LinkedIn guy. Oh man. You know? Did you have a haircut? Did you not yeah. have? Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I had like. Fully, fully shaved, like tight hair. I worked at a law office, so I had to wear like. So basically, was your LinkedIn profile day. just you holding a tiki torch? Is basically what it was. <laughs> no, dude, time. I was, I was like uh, the kind of guy I would like listen to, uh, like business guy podcasts. Get out of here! Yeah, yeah. You I are. used to listen to podcasts like thinking it was for <laughs> learning. You know, like I would listen to like Sam Harris and be like, mm, you know, intellect. I used to watch porn like that too. <laughs> Every time I would watch porn, I'd be like, yo, I'm learning these moves right now. Yeah, so that's how you fix this. That's thing. how it's exactly right. I was like, oh my God, four fingers in there? I can do that. <laughs> it's just spit. It's just spit. <laughs> no way. So you listen to podcasts trying to maximize your career. Yeah, I was, like, I, was like, be... I was like, I was like, you know, make six figures by 30, make a million by 40. And then what? Kind of. I mean, that, those are the questions you don't ask yourself. It's not in No, then those what. are the questions you well, ask. Well, the problem is once you start asking yourself those questions, you really spiral out on not having, like, an actual identity or purpose. That's... Then, you you know, you have to get a dog and you have to start doing <laughs> stand-up. <laughs> Natural progression. You're like or, or you do drugs and kill yourself. Shit. I don't know. Like I don't know. You, I mean, you have a you have a quarter life crisis where you're like, oh wait, I don't have any values or like. You thought you were gonna have six figures by what age? Thirty, and then be a millionaire by forty. That's the I. I have an MBA. <laughs> wait, brag. I I'm I was like I have a Sega Genesis. I'm a business guy. I was like I'm gonna be a a C suite. Dude, you Man. know, like I had like a whole. That is a. Cr I mean, no, I'm not. Look, I'm not saying that's crazy to think that. That's probably a really rational thing. Anybody who's going into marketing or anything like that, and you have a fucking big degree, the big degree. Yeah. Well, that right. So I like I had like advisors that helped me chart out the way that my career was supposed to progress for it to be successful. So I had like certain benchmarks Man. that like. It didn't matter how I got there. I just have to be at this point, at this point, and then Man. like if you keep following that traje trajectory, it'll kind of yeah just you'll, facilitate exactly. You'll get up the mountain no matter what. Right. It didn't I matter don't. what I was doing necessarily. I just had to have this many years of experience in like this these certain applicable skills. I mean, I can relate to that because like when I was like a kid, like you thought you were gonna be have six figures by thirty. And a millionaire by 40. Right. I thought I was going to be dead by 30 and can come back from the dead <laughs> by 40. Right. And do something like I was like, they're going to dig me up and there's going to be another war. I honestly thought I'd be a side. Oh, by now. OK. You're not like I cryogenically would, frozen. No, no, you no. thought that you were gonna, thought, they were going to rebuild you like Robocop. I, not like Robocop, like Universal Soldier. I thought what was going to happen was like they were going to be like, we need more soldiers.
soldiers for like a future war. Zombie, zombie, zombie cyborg. Like just like somebody who's completely expendable. And I honestly thought like, yo, they're just going to put like a weird plug in my head. Right. They're going to send me on the front lines and that's going to be my life. And I'm not going to really think about it until I do the ultimate sacrifice where I pictured myself going into like a hut where there's like a baby about to be blown up. And I capture the baby and I'm like, I'm going to throw this baby off a bridge because it's full of bombs and shit like that. But really. Well, uh, the baby is. What is blowing up? The baby, the baby is, is the a bomb. baby bomb. Oh, okay. It's a hut with a baby bomb in it. Right. And then my cyborg self would take the baby and be like, I've got to dispose of it. But then I would have a change of heart, like my humanity would kick in. I'd like take the bombs out of the baby, perform a type of surgery, then sure. raise the baby as my own. And then the baby would end up killing me because I would be uh, like just like a, a terrible death machine. Almost like the scene in... Terminator. This is basically Terminator Three. Rise of the Machines is basically what I was basing my whole life on. That I would uh, come back, try to help a child, and then realize that I was like the bad guy the whole time, right. even though that I was like you know finding my humanity. And then the baby would have to kill me, knowing that I was still like just a machine of death. You know so you were saying? talking about um, how it's been recommended that you go to therapy. What is that? <laughs> I I would recommend never saying any of that stuff. You know what? <laughs> to so, a professional. You know what's crazy? During the pandemic, I did do BetterHelp, and I got a lot of okays. <laughs> I got a lot huh. of all right. Those... You know, telehealth is an option, but I think that maybe you need to turn Dude, yourself in. Honestly, my therapy should have just been like that scene from Wet Hot American Summer, where the kids just talking into microphones that aren't plugged in. That's what I should have done. Yeah. They should have just been like, "We'll get you a fucking therapist." And it should have just gone right, right. into the and ether. It's, and, and it's never, giving your little never brother allowed. a controller yeah. that's not plugged in. Not at all. I felt bad for my... Th like, that's the worst thing about online therapy is that I felt... I started feeling bad for her. Yeah. She was trying very hard. Yeah, and just but, not... And it wasn't that, like, I was being so negative. I had an answer for everything that she was giving me. And I right. think that's the difference. Like when chicks talk about like therapy's done this for me and that's because they want validation. I think women mm. like therapy because they want validation and a voice and to be heard and right. then like acknowledged. Men don't like therapy because we want fucking results and answers. Right, right. I don't like therapy because when I'm like coming to you with a problem, and I'm like, here it is. Right. Girls don't actually like if like you try to solve their problems for them. Yeah, that's that's. They just want to be able crazy. to complain about them, and that's what I I wasn't there that's, to have. I wasn't there to have a digital verbal punching bag. Right. I could do that when I go on Pornhub in the comment section. I do that anyway. Yeah. That's my verbal punching bag. I'll fucking go off on some people in the comments. I can I can talk to strangers at a bar if I want people to be like, oh, yeah. whoa. It's very <laughs> exactly. I could just get pulled over and, right. have a, <laughs> and just be like, oh my god, I like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just I've got a lot in my mind. You know, it's like, you don't understand what the pandemic's doing to me right now. I you gotta drive around. We will. So it's like, do you ever think if you were in a line of duty and you did the ultimate sacrifice, <laughs> you'd be able to do it? Have you ever found a, like, a baby bomb? Have you, dude, if I laid the baby bomb on an officer... I think I'd honestly be shot. Recruited. No, <laughs> I think that's. No, no, no. I think if you start telling an officer about the baby bomb, no, you're, they're going to suicide dream, by cop. No, you. no, 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 no. They actually, they might take me out back and shoot me. In the put back. you down, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so the bomb is in the baby. No, I take the and the bomb you know out what? of the baby. I'm like, no, officer, it's a baby. But I'm saving the baby. I do the surgery. And <laughs> what's crazy is if that were to happen, if a cop were to shoot me in the head. And say, like, the last thing he heard was me explaining that there was a bomb inside of a child mm -hmm. that I had to save. And they explained that to my mom that no point in time would she be like, that's unheard, no yeah, way. Yeah. She'd be like, okay, I'm hearing you. Right. I Okay. <laughs> like, she'd be yeah, like, you don't... He <laughs> He had these thoughts from a very early age. <laughs> from a it's, young age. From a young age. I and remember when he was five and he came home. You know, it's like, I look back at stuff I did when I was a kid and, I mean... A lot of it is like manifesto stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But like it's outrageous manifesto stuff. Right. Like I know that I'll never be able to like right. you know, do any of that stuff. Oh. But I would write about it like, yo, this is like ten years off and like when the government falls, I'm gonna be there for You that. should just do it, dude. You what? should just put together I mean, I'm I'm always stoked on a manifesto. It's pretty great. I, I love a manifesto. What's uh, the best manifesto you think you could put together? Like for you. Oh. Uh, 
for you? I don't know. The problem is like I'm, all I feel like I, I've I've studied enough manifestos. I feel like I would have that's to that's already be a borrowing. manifesto in itself. Right. It's that's if you study manifestos. Well, you I, I guess not study, but like I've read enough of them. That's still crazy. That's like still the, the guy up. that lit himself on fire recently. Did oh, you read any guy. of his stuff? No. He was almost getting me, dude. Was he? Yeah, it was every now and then. It was like every few sentences he'd say something that I was like, "Oh fuck!" But then again, it's like when I see when I saw that guy light himself on fire. As much as I was like, "What a fucking idiot!" I was like, yeah. "Man, I wish Pretty I believed in cool. something that yeah. much." I wish I believed in anything. You should read his manifesto. Was it you might good? light yourself on fire. Damn, dude, that's what I want. It's and like also, like, to inspire me. The thing is, a good manifesto, like. It's so Shainer, good. I was just thinking, a good business idea for you is doing the audible version of Manifest. That would be sick. You know what would be great, honestly? I think, I think you could really market that. I think well, a, I actually I listened to the Unabomber's Manifesto who on read, Audible. Who uh, read it? I don't I don't remember. It was boring. It, the thing is, there Damn was two it. of them. One of them was so dry that like all the ratings were like, this guy sucks. It you don't read, don't Damn listen it. to this one. But like w you could do a better one. Yeah, but I mean, I think. The best part about Audible now and Manifest, because like, what was, was on Audible? The yeah. Manifest yeah, was yeah. on the Audible? Unabomber's Manifest. How long is it? A um, couple hours. That's so long. That's, and you don't know who was reading it? I mean, it I like just a don't remember. Voice? No, I mean, the guys who. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The, but the guys who are that actually good so at sick. reading audiobooks usually aren't, like, they're, they're audiobook celebrities. I don't remember any of them. I'm I mean, not, I don't know. Awesome I, I mean, that read by Gary Busey. Dude, you know, <laughs> not only that, with AI, you know, like now they can just like, they can take AI and take someone's voice and put it into like an audible thing now. Right. People who've been long dead. That's what's so crazy about it. You could just have the audible read by like fucking like Jimmy Stewart or something. Like that would be like, oh no, the government's gonna take it down. And, I, and, and he was gonna burn the flag and she was gonna burn the flag. Stuff like that would be fucking sick. And I don't know why we're not using that as a fucking application in our, in, in, in our technology. Two this goes back hours. to the two and a half hours. Two and a half hours for the Unibomb. You listened to all of that? Yeah. Was the ending good? Was it a twist? No, it would actually, I mean, there was a lot of times that it got, like, uh, exhausting. Yeah, it's a manifesto. Yeah. I don't think a it's lot like, of it all right, would be, dude, I get it. I got your point, yeah. right? You don't need to do another metaphor or example, like, Man. you know, whatever. He really has to drive the point on. But but that's the thing, like, a good manifesto is, like, worth, it almost justifies what you do. Yeah. Like, you know, Ted Kaczynski, it's like, uh, he was pretty close to right. Should he have <laughs> sent all those bombs about it? Dude, we gotta Maybe make a t-shirt like, that says Ted Kaczynski. Pretty close <laughs> to right. Just this close. I mean, I come mean, on. Hear it out. Don't knock it. I feel like that's the general consensus about his manifesto. Is like, yeah, he's making some good points, but like, you can't think like that. Yeah, you can't. Well, no, uh, no, you can it's think not, like that. No, he's no. wrong. In it. Uh, no, no, no. See, the difference is you can think like that. You can think like that. You can write like that. It's just the then the action is what really fucks everything up. You can think however you want. You can write well, whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. This is the problem was old Teddy was making bombs and right. Well, I guess I guess that's the issue up. is like if you actually believe that stuff, though, then the ends justify the means. Sure. Right. But that's it's what like, I mean. It's the same as like guys that like. Uh, like try to bomb abortion clinics. It's like if you really believe that what they're doing is evil. Sure, you're you're gonna that, be justified. That justifies. But it. that's the thing is that like that's a level of, in my head, borderline religious nonsense. Like believing in something that much, having faith in in your righteousness that much, to take another life or lives of people right. who are providing a service or somebody else yeah. is just that's borderline fucking nuts that's I mean, I, where I don't think it's borderline I think that it no no it's <laughs> I think that's no, no, no. definition no, no, no. psychopath no that's the whole thing is that 
when I say borderline, it's borderline because you, you're you crossing the border into that. You can walk sure. the line of writing about it. You can walk the line like, yo, you know what I wish? I wish someone would blow these people up. I wish somebody would kill these people. I don't but, know if you're even allowed to do that. I don't know. You can. <laughs> I think you I did can. see a tweet. Uh, like yesterday, that was like, when are we going to start assassinating presidents again? You know what? And had like 60,000. I And I, I right away, I was like, you, I don't think you're allowed to. No, no, no. no. I don't think you're even allowed you to can, hypothetically be like, man, I wish someone would really assassinate these no, You can't these guys. say, I wish someone would kill the president. You can say, I wish the president was dead. You cannot say, I'm going to kill the president. That I, How are you? Are you sure about this? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I did your podcast, dude. Yo, I just got. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is the end podcast <laughs> with Ryan Shannon. I'm joined by the one and only Miguel Silva. Thank you for being on the show. You got anything dude, for so these people? For to, you got anything to plug for these people? Um, yeah. Uh, tonight I'm doing the season two finale. This of will Dark come out Court. next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Well, it's you know it's also on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Go um, back. But yeah, tonight we're gonna do the season finale of uh, Door Court uh, here in Philly. It's gonna, uh, you know, Door Court. If you don't know what it is, it's pretty much an open mic that we live stream, and then the whole time the stream's talking shit, uh, and then I read my favorite comment. We read our favorite comments Fantastic. to the people. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of like Kill Tony, but also Kill Tony is kind of also just doing American Idol. And there's only a few formats for TV shows, sure. but whatever, you know. <laughs> sure, we're, it's kind of like Kill Tony. I never watched Kill Tony. It's just like now everyone's like, oh, okay, so you're just yeah, doing Kill it's, Tony. It's a and problem. it's like, uh, yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of like the guy who created, like, you know, uh, King Dings, and then it was Ring Dings. You know those? It's like the guy's like, I didn't even know those pastries existed. I was just trying to make my own. I was just trying to be the own I, guy. I don't know that it's exactly like that. No, it's pretty much, <laughs> it's exactly like that. No, honestly, what I was trying to do is digital graffiti. To do? Yes, you were trying to do, and I was going to bring up digital graffiti. Yeah. But that was like, that was. That was an amazing show. That was, have you, you never did? I never got to see it. It was great. I just have heard stories great. about it. And it then there's always like, oh, digital graffiti is coming back someday. It was the most fun. Everybody no, loved it. No, because now, now you have things like Kill Tony. You have things right. like Kill Tony, which is basically like digital graffiti. But digital graffiti was good in the way that like you had to power through the fact that you didn't know what anybody was saying about you. Which the is, whole time. I mean, which the, is essentially what I'm trying to do. Digital graffiti was the best because you're just like, as an audience member, you're just reading a chat. Yeah. And the the comic doesn't know what's getting the laugh at all. Right. Because sometimes someone will time a comment during someone's punchline. So you see, you'll see comics think they're crushing. Yeah. That's, yeah, and yeah. That, but that, in a way, though, is how you win. Right. You have to like almost ride out the laughter like you are getting them. Yeah. And being stifled at any chance at any point in time makes you look like the biggest fucking dildo yeah. on the planet. And having been a guy who's done it a few times, it's good. It, it's the way it should be, this honestly. Is, this is also how Dark Court goes. Because you, I mean, it's it's the same idea. It was it, That's really where the idea came from. Yeah. I was like, I've got people that show up to live chat. And I've got friends that do open mics. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they can, like, the, the, you know, they're the whole time just being, like, it's you're gonna, fucking it, I fat, mean, we can see your dick print, it's tiny, what I, what I, But what I did like about digital graffiti, or at least, like, even, even the idea of Kill Tony, it's like, you, you're not chosen to get stoned to death. You go out and, and get stoned on your by yourself right you go you fall on the sword basically for the in the name and sake of comedy yeah and that's what i loved about it so much is that everybody who had done digital graffiti prior did no one walked into it being like i don't know what this is about well everybody yeah knew. yeah yeah no, and i knew. do i try to when i invite people to dark court i try to like explain and like only invite people that i think are gonna get it and be cool about sure. it because i don't want it to be dinner for schmucks you know, yeah. like I don't want to pick out people that are like and that embarrassing I, themselves. And I respect you for it. 
And that's good. I do want to. That's a, so I do. I'm deeply tempted. See, this to goes turn back to the manifesto into, thing. <laughs> this goes back like you can think about it all you want. You can write about it. I would love to be like, here's a collection of freaks that you know. Like, it ain't hard. Watch them humiliate themselves and like let's mock them together. Uh, but I also don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to exploit anybody. I get it. You don't want to. Eh, <laughs> all right. I'm just saying you don't want to. The, the thing is, what I think you're doing is covering your bases. Is you don't want, or at least I think nobody wants, is to get somebody up there. You start throwing, you know, stones at them. Yeah. You know, they start getting hit. They get real butt hurt about it. Right. And then they're writing a manifesto. Right. Right. And then you are under the gun. Yeah. You ever think about that? Uh, all the time. You think about getting assassinated? Oh, not assassinated. Just like people like. Mostly complaining on Facebook is really all it is, you know? Yeah, but that's that's super gay. Who I cares? know, but I, I that's the last thing I need, dude. The la that's the last thing you need? I would say not peeing blood anymore would be the last thing you need, Mikhail. The, not peeing blood anymore is the first thing that I need. That's the that, that's what I'm saying. Like you need to don't worry about don't worry about comments on Facebook. Who cares? That'll no, kill but you. I, I like really am not interested in becoming somebody else's like sob story you know what like do you, i don't want i don't i i don't want door court to become any more of a burden like i am already <laughs> it's so much <laughs> dude it's so much effort it's so annoying yeah, like i have it, to it can be yeah schedule shit i mean this whole weekend is gonna be it's wild i'm i'm going into like pretty serious credit card debt to make it happen I've been uh, stressed out. I've been losing sleep. I've been like, it's exhausting. I have to yeah. organize schedules for other adult men. Like, I have to, you know, it's called, I, there's it, so many things that. It's like you didn't know what running a show would be like. Yeah. I, at no, all. I, I like only thought of the cool parts. And I was like, man, it'd yeah. be really cool if I had a show. And then I like did all the stuff to put it together. And it's like, yo, this is gay. Man, I don't want to yeah. do this anymore. It's fucking infuriating. Yeah. But so now, season finale, and then we're taking a break for the summer so boom. I can relax. And then when is Door Court scheduled to come back? Or do you? Uh, I don't have know? it scheduled yet. I'm, God damn it. I will figure it out, I, but I need some time off. I well, need to. I think it'll be a great show. It's going to be. I think it's going to be. So great. good. I also. Um, I bash from the chat uh, has a friend who does filmography uh, for some of the guys in there. He. Uh, recorded mccusker's uh special intro oh sick and he's gonna come through and direct tonight great so we're gonna have like it's so, gonna be so does that lull hd does that lull any of your concerns that there's gonna I be mean, somebody having someone that have, actually watching knows the hindenburg crash with, with no no, no. <laughs> like I, I have like real <laughs> help for once it's not just drew showing up at the last minute like he's the star wide receiver Oh, man. I'm contributing nothing. Gotta snap that motherfucker. <laughs> so speaking of assassinating, did you watch Did you watch the debate at all? Did you oh, watch Oh, yeah, it? yeah. How, your thoughts? Um, your so thoughts? So fun. So good. Your thoughts? Who won? I mean... We know who won. Trump, yeah. If there's a winner. The thing is, okay. They set the whole thing up to neuter Trump as much as possible. They like, tried. They created all the rules that they could, and it helped him because the thing that he didn't do last time when he debated biden was shut up and let biden embarrass himself straight up he kept talking over him he kept trying to win the debate sure and you thought but you could if he's actually debating if he's actually trying to make points if he's talking politics well keep in mind nobody nobody I, I what i'm saying is as much as there were points made no points were made no points did you see but it was wild if he's talking shit Sure. He looks like a genius. Yeah, like he's like quick, he's witty, he's like, oh, he this guy's on point. Yeah, but if I, if he's I, talking I get that. politics, he's just an angry grandpa. Sure. But if he's insulting you, he's the leader of the free world. <laughs> you know? And so he got plenty of opportunity. Like when Biden sure. just like kind of lost his sentence, like well, Biden looked like uh, he was gonna die. We beat Medicare. Yeah, and he, Trump's just like, yeah, you beat it into the ground. You know what? Like you just on him. It was no, that was that was a per, that was a slam dunk. Yeah, that was that was so crazy. But I will say, even if they were trying to help Trump, they were also hurting Biden by constantly putting the camera on his face 
Yeah. While was... the mouth agape, looking like you're trying to like yeah. stop a frog's heart, <laughs> is fucking insane. Just so crazy looking to a point where I was like, man, they're like, I don't know who this is for. Like, I didn't know if they were like, oh, yeah, we're turning off the mic so Trump can't talk shit and be a dickhead. But we're also going to focus on Joe Biden so you can see this living corpse try to breathe his last breath right before he succumbs to heart failure. It was amazing. And I didn't know, like, that was a great equalizer. In my head, I'm like, wow, they did both of them justice by both of, like, trying to, like, really stifle both of them. But yeah, really, yeah. in the end, it was just Joe Biden looking like he uh, should have been taken out back. Yeah. It was wild. Well, but and that that's what probably would have happened last time. If you gave him enough time to speak, he would lose track of his thoughts and then go I into mean, the stuttering, just saying nonsense thing. Now, I'm also still stuck on... Looking like he's trying to stop a frog's heart. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm gonna be thinking pull about up, that. Pull up a picture of fucking Joe Biden. <laughs> like it looked like he didn't. You couldn't see what he was looking off off screen. Yeah. And it looked like someone had like just a a frog in a fucking clear case. And he was trying. To and he was just like, down. if I get in there, I can do. Like it was fucking. Out of control. It looked like he was amazed that even he was alive. That was that was what was so crazy yeah. about it. And I just like watching that whole thing. Don't get me wrong. Did I did I think it was going to be amazing? No. Did I think it was going to any anybody was going to make an actual point? No right. fucking way. Right. Did anybody answer a question? Yeah. The, Nobody answered a question. A single question. That was no. also funny when they asked about child welfare. And he's like, let me go back to get, right. kicking this guy in the balls again. I was like, Yo, you know, they did, you didn't. Hold on. There's one where he's just staring so hard at nothing. It is. Am there it is. <laughs> just. I can get it. I can stop that frog's heart. Oh, man. I wonder what what Trump had said at this point, because there was a couple things that he reacted to that were funny. That, like, Trump was just saying nonsense, and he was like... Yeah, it, well, they were both kind of... I will give it to Trump, too. He he did not... I guess because the mic was off and you couldn't hear him be like, no, I didn't do that. Yeah. Wrong. But uh, every time they, they put it on Trump, he wasn't doing the famous, like, no. Right. He well, wasn't he doing any of was, smug shit. Yeah, he was definitely, it was like, fuck, trained to not... Yeah. Yeah, and that in itself, I think, should scare everybody. Yeah, that he's that actually Trump is it learning. In. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that should freak everybody out. That Trump's like, oh, I'm gonna learn a lot from my mistakes. That last somebody time. was able to be like, hey, here's what you did wrong last time, and he's like, that's a yeah. good point. That should Not, freak everyone oh, the fuck out. Also, my favorite part was Trump, like, went full apprentice and started like bragging about how much he fires. Oh yeah. It's like I fired I fired a hundred people. You didn't fire anyone. It's you don't fire, I fire. <laughs> it was nuts. He was like, I fired Comey. You it's tough to fire an FBI agent. It's tough to it's tough to fire a federal agent Look, and you pay a lot of consequences for it, the, but I the, fired him. The funny thing is it that tough to fire an FBI agent when you're the president? When you're the I president mean, I, I think so. I mean he was like the head of the FBI, wasn't he? Sure was. Or he was head of something. Something. Not the FBI, maybe the FBI. Comey, we don't I think know. You guys the, know what he was head of? He was a director, director of, the FBI. of FBI. Yeah, so I, I mean, I think that he did also. He did probably get himself into like a decent amount of trouble with the intelligence sure. agencies by going after them. But the the thing is, I think when you're the director of the FBI and you have the director of the FBI, I don't look. I don't know. Look, full disclosure, I don't know how the FBI works. I don't right. know. It looks, oh, what? I, I know. My manifesto says otherwise, yeah, yeah. but I don't know how it works. However, I all I know is it's controlled by the Jews. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the inner it machinations. Might it might be, but uh, I think if you're the director of the FBI and you get canned, I'm pretty sure there are people under you just like hell yeah, I'm now director of the FBI. Sure, I don't think it was that as much as it was like oh man, that's such a tough 
thing to do, I'm pretty sure that was an easy spot to fill. I don't think anybody in my head no, I want to believe no, no, no. I want to believe like, that everyone's think, qualified to be in the FBI. I think the move of as a president making decisions over the any of the intelligence agencies is like seen as a threat. Sure. What uh, I think that's why they rigged the election against him last time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why they created mail-in ballots. What is uh what is one policy if you had if you now look, I'm not going like policy in the oh, way you if think I policy. Could. Like I'm not like uh like you know, I'm saying what is one thing if you were president or were direct like one degree of separation from the next president and you could get in his ear and push it. What is one thing you think Well, okay, so this is this is something I've been thinking about. What about like in ethnic cleansing? Hear me out. Like the Holocaust, like right? The we Holocaust. take the guys at the border, we put them in a camp, we get them in the showers, but this time, just regular showers. Yeah? Because these guys stink. You know what I'm saying? Let's clean these boys up. Let's get them a bath. Maybe get them a job. Get them paying taxes. Get them on the books. Miguel the Benevolent Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Look, how about this? Instead of gas... Water. <laughs> Just regular water, guys. And soap. Maybe some soap. <laughs> Maybe get them out of you know, get them a little loofah, you know? No. Uh, What's our wash cloth? So you, cloth, you cloth, would you cloth. would just clean migrants? Is that, yeah. that's, your, yeah. <laughs> that's your old pop. Look, guys, it's just stinky. Yeah, a cleansing. A cleansing. An ethnic cleanse. Man, you know what? I like where your head's at. Folks. It's pretty good. Uh, that's the only thing you'd do? Is it just wash people? Yeah. No jobs, no, no, well, no education. I, that's what I'm saying. Maybe they'll get a job. You know? <laughs> Maybe I, they'll definitely be you able to sell is. oranges better. I'm going to buy oranges off these fucking stinky assholes. You're like assholes. a lady who owns a shitty dog. Who <laughs> thinks that one bath can get him at the Westminster Cup. You're like, you know what? If you just wash him up, throw a coat of paint on that motherfucker, get him out there, he'll get a job. I'll get you a job. Look. That's not how make, it works. It'll make these Ubers smell a lot better. You know what the Uber? You know what the Uber situation right now in Philadelphia is pretty goddamn wild. Yeah, I've had some stinky Ubers to yeah. a point where, and the, you know what it is like. I put down the window. Have you ever been in an Uber and put down the window and then they put it back up? Oof, dude, power <laughs> move. I, yeah, that's in a scary way, behavior. In a way, I respect it a whole lot. Because, like, that guy knows that he smells like Aqua Velva's asshole. Yeah. And just decided, he's but like, yeah, you no, 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 you got to get yeah. on this. There's no way you're I'm not, not getting, getting paid enough. No. So at the very least, you're not even going to tip me. I'm going to drive erratically. I'm going to yeah. pretend I don't know what a stop sign means. But you're going to get there in one piece, and then you're going to smell like what I think you should smell like. Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty fucking great. That, I, that I'll give it to you. Yeah. It we is should. nice to show up to a bar in Philly just stinking like an Uber driver. It is. It is why the only time I've ever had an Uber driver that didn't smell when it was a mom, like just really? a regular. Have you ever had the elusive regular mom just trying to make a few bucks? Well, what on do the you side? mean regular? Because I've I've gotten a, a couple like black Muslim moms. Okay, I said regular mom. <laughs> <laughs> so no, then I don't think so. I, I'll do <laughs> so I, I guess by your criteria, no, I don't think so. No, I mean, what I'm saying is, I'm talking about the lady who looks like she shouldn't even be there. Like, she honestly looks like you were just walking down the street. She's like, hey, I know you. You're yeah, my son's yeah, friend. Yeah. Get well, in. not here. In Connecticut. Yeah, well, that's... In Connecticut, I got thrown out of a car because I smelled like cigarettes. And she's like, I'm actually allergic to smoke. And I was like, no, you're not. Wow. I'm like, oh, I'm not? And I was like, no, you're kicking us out because you don't want this smell in the car. And she's like, yeah, I am. Get the fuck out. Well, that's her, you know... Oh, don't lie to me. She, she don't lie to you. I think an Uber driver's job is to lie. The whole job is lying. <laughs> I hope not. The whole job is lying. Do you think they want you in the car? That's the main thing that they're doing. Do you think they want you in the they car? They don't know how to fucking drive. Yeah, I'll tell you. They, they probably don't know how to do that. They, they know lied. How to lie. And they got in. How here? do you think they got in this country? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Border Uber. They just kind of got. <laughs> they just kind of got over there. Five stars all the way. But you would just bring back just giving people baths? Nothing else? I mean, I think that would be first on the agenda. In my first 100 days in first, office. First 100. Yeah. Just just baths. 
I don't know, man. I don't have any like real ideas of political opinions. I mean, I don't either. I'm I just think, saying okay, things you know that what? I think if would I, be would make. The our... problem is the the best idea that I have is uh, literally fascism. <laughs> I think I think that we should take the Department of Education and put it under the Department of Defense so that we have enough money to fund our education. Do you think? Do you think? Do you agree with the Ten Commandments being in schools in Louisiana? Absolutely, you do. I I. <laughs> I think that we should be putting God back in school. I don't think that. Stop teaching these kids. I think about if we're gonna gender. have if we're gonna have the Ten Commandments, we should also have RoboCop's Prime Directives in school as well, because <laughs> I think those are more of like upholding the public trust. Come on, that's more than you know, not coveting thy neighbor's can, wife. Can you remind me of RoboCop's Prime? So uphold the public trust. Okay. Oh fuck. Oh, no, I can't. You know what? I can't. Mm. I can't. Now you're giving me a brain fart. Now right. I feel like a shit. I've only I've only seen RoboCop a couple times. Oh no! It's uphold the law, serve the public trust, and then the prime directive four is 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 classified because you can't arrest. <laughs> <laughs> we we have phone calls to listen to. Oh hell yeah! Better get those on. I'm timing you. You lost. You lost. Yep, yep. Clocked him. Yo, Shaner. It's your boy Doug again. Doggy. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. Have you ever witnessed your parents doing, like, insane things while growing up? When I was a kid, um, my mom had took us down a fucking Daytona Beach Bike Week. Me and my little brother, we were probably nine and six or some shit years old. Me and my brother witnessed my mom get drunk as fuck all day long driving around in a rental car. And in Florida, I guess you could fucking drive on the beaches or something. And she decided it was a good idea to take the rental car on the beach and drive that bitch into the ocean. My mom got raided on the beach in the water in a rental fucking car, got a DUI with me and my little brother in the car, fucking got arrested. We were with some random guy she's friends with. Uh, we had to call our grandparents to bail her out of fucking jail in Daytona Beach, Florida while we were kids. This was insane. Uh, have you ever witnessed your parents do anything crazy like that? All right, bro. Have a good day. Have I ever witnessed my parents doing anything crazy? His mom tried to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic story of a, a mom putting her kids in the car and driving them into the ocean. That's a story about her, her his dad cheating on his mom in Daytona, Florida, I, and then her, her getting drunk and getting then deciding drunk and she's going to kill the kids. Murder the kids. Yeah. Man. That, that was that one of up. the saddest things I've ever heard. I don't think that's as sad as... Well, no, the, dude, the second he said he she drove the car into the ocean, yeah. I was like, oh, shit, did he? she have the kids in the car? And then he said, me and my brother in the car, so, it's like, oh, this is he, a joyride that went Here's wrong. the thing, though. I will say, were the kids seatbelted? That's the, that's the actual question. I guess. If a kid is seatbelted in the car... While driving into the ocean, yeah, then the mom that mom's out, out for blood, right? That mom's trying to drown them babies. All I, the time. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that if they're not seat belted, then that conclusively. Uh, I don't know, because if she's that's drunk, a hell of a way to teach kids to swim. That's <laughs> like that's like the craziest way. Like, what are you gonna do if you're if you're? I a, think it's a classic lady oopsie. <laughs> you, you think that driving into the ocean is a classic? Yeah. Bitches, they're on their stand tides. <laughs> Explain tides to a lady. Oh, uh, man. Like, you know, they the don't ladies, tide, the, ladies do be making oopsies. Yeah, the only tide they should know is what goes in the laundry. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right, bitch? <sighs> Time for dinner. What I'm saying is, um, have I witnessed anybody do anything crazy? Like, my dad was out of his fucking mind yeah. all the fucking time. Right. Especially with cars. One of the craziest things I've ever seen, have you ever been hunting in a car? Um, No. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
One. <laughs> I, I actually, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone doing that. You've never been car hunting? <laughs> it's pretty sick. Sounds cool. So we were with uh, my buddy, uh, my dad's friend, Scott, who is, I found out like a couple years ago, passed away, which was kind of a bummer because he was a good dude. But we were with Scott and my dad and his son, Nathan, and we were back behind Penhurst where you used to go to like hunt because it was just a bunch of open fields there. And there was rarely, if any, cops or people. Right. So we're in the car and like we didn't I go. I was going to say also not legal hunting grounds. All right, look. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not at all. What's the, what's the statute Daniel, of limitations? You're not even supposed Daniel, to be Daniel, there. Daniel, what's a legal hunting <laughs> ground? What's the statute okay? of limitations on car yeah, hunting? Yeah, why don't you shut up? Yeah, there was a, dude, it's our property. We're on our property. So we're in the car, but I remember at one point in time, Scott was resting the, like it was a, uh, a shotgun he was resting it on the the window and my dad was moving the window up and down to aim for the gun so one thing that we did i like that it's a shotgun so now it's close range too <laughs> so now keep in mind i don't think i don't think they were like but also isn't the buck gonna destroy the window listen <laughs> shut up so here's the thing i remember they knew i think my dad thought that and he knew had gumption enough. We got out of the the van that we were in, so we got out and we were like, at that point in time, hunting was over, drinking and just having fun. Right, was in full swing. Right. So I think they just thought that like they were just gonna shoot at birds that were flying by and like the birds are going up. So at one point in time, I also don't think my dad thought that Scott was gonna pull that trigger, but he did. And the whole window burst, <laughs> and part of the mirror got shot off in the process. And what was crazy is that was my dad's work van that then he had to explain <laughs> to Henkels and McCoy because he worked at the for them at the time. And I remember like we had to go. It was like one of the many times being with him where my dad was like, "All right, so um, whatever mom asked about what we did today." <laughs> We just went out. We like, you know, we didn't get anything. Nothing happened. You boys, all right. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine out. Just keep it quiet all the time. That was uh, pretty crazy that Scott also got glass stuck inside of his cheek. <laughs> and he had to go home to his wife and be like, oh, I have glass stuck inside of my cheek. Like, it was no big deal. Hunting accident. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. That's the, uh, my mom was never really a crazy lady except for, she did well, one time. She got impregnated by. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> That's the craziest thing she ever did. Yeah. I think that, like, and th I've often brought it up. Like, I don't want to know if my dad kept his prosthetic leg on when they banged <laughs> or if he took it off. I imagine the angles you could get in. But I also want to believe that if he did take it off, he took it off like he kicked off one shoe and then kicked, and off, kicked off the, other the, other, leg. the whole leg. <laughs> And it flew across the room and hit shit. That's what I want to believe in my head. That's what I want. I like to imagine that your mom w was, like, taking his pants off to suck him off and then <laughs> went down and took his leg off and... What, just suck off the stump? Sucked the nub? Yeah. That Maybe would a be, lick, at least. I, I think that, one, that would be the most disgusting thing I've ever <laughs> seen in my, <laughs> in my life. Because my dad's, the, the nub that he had... Was not well done. Oh yeah, I can't. It was imagine. done in the like early '60s, and they thought they were gonna have to amputate his whole leg. Yeah. So to before they did that, they just took the back heel and pulled it all the way up to the front of the shin, and then sewed it with like huge stitches because they thought that that was just gonna like keep the wound closed long enough for them to just go back and like you know oh if it stays it stays if it doesn't and it goes gangrenous we'll just take the whole fucking leg yeah and then it just uh ended up healing so then he had this it like a, a big lump of skin yeah it looked like a baseball made of meat that is disgusting it was wildly that disgusting is really gross it was crazy but that was uh yeah i mean my parents have done you have a, a disgusting and horrifying life dude no <laughs> No, see, you know what? I take offense to that. <laughs> and that's going in my manifesto. <laughs> my dis that's the title of my manifesto. My disgusting, disgusting and horrifying, horrifying life. Horrifying life. Oh, we got one more call. All right, sick. 
Oh, man. I don't have any stories about my parents doing anything quite like what well, you two described. You, know, you said you had an MBA, so I wouldn't figure you would. Sorry. Hey, Shaner. What? My name is Isai Nunez. I'm a Mexican-American chef at Texas right outside of Houston. Uh, I just want to air a complaint with this wetback who <laughs> is our fry cook. Dude, he's a dickhead. How do I deal with this dickhead at work? He's passive aggressive. I was like, do I do I just call immigration on his ass? He's a bitch, man. He sucks. He's always complaining about me coming in late. It's not that I'm coming in late. I make good money. <laughs> I make very good money hourly. So <laughs> I can get my work done in an hour. He has to do three hours, right? And he also has a lawn service, so this guy's got me doing rain dances on his day off. Make sure it rains on his day off so he can't do his fucking yard work. That's how much of a hater he's made me. Anyway, he sucks. Uh, anyway, love you. Love the show. Uh, also, I got heard you got a hog, man. Let's see that thing. Let's see that thing. Post it on the, on the timeline, man. <laughs> Is that how the call ends? <laughs> you should have you should what have a, a Patreon gear here. shift. What a fucking gear shift on that fucking call. You should have a sixty nine dollar Patreon tier. Holy crap. That was amazing. Uh <laughs> what do you think he should do? Because you were talking about ethnic cleansing earlier. Yeah. What well, do you What do you think? Tell the guy to take a shower. You think it's just shower time for? for <laughs> <laughs> Give him a bath. Try giving him a bath. Did you try? Next time him he's a bath? pissing you off, if he's like saying talking shit, just start like wiping soap on yeah. him. Just like scrub him with a no, cloth. You put food near the, the bathroom. Lure him there. Once <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. Once he gets there, you shut the door real if fast. If you have one of those like uh, w like a sink that like sprays. Oh, oh the, the hose sink. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Get him with it. Yeah. As he's walking by. Man, I never, I never knew. Clean behind his ears. That there would be for the so first much time in his life. Wow. <laughs> do you think, do you think there is, I mean, I never knew it wasn't until I started working in a, in a restaurant that, uh, I didn't know the, the level of racism that happened between like even just Mexican Americans towards actual like Mexicans. I didn't know that was a thing that happened a lot. I also didn't know that there was a uh, racial disparity between I I would say that um on average Hispanic people are the most like active and outward white supremacists I've ever met. It is wild. Yeah. It is wild There's when it happens. A, a much like more established now, hierarchy. Have you have you heard the theory behind that? Um I'd like to hear yours. So it's not it's not <laughs> One, you know, they recognize. <laughs> Two, uh, during the Second World War, when Hitler was planning, so part of his invasion to take over America. Yeah, he besides, the, what's it called, notes? I don't remember. But he, he, they got he, he caught was, with communication. He, he was going to sandwich yeah. down through Canada, up through Mexico, and then hope that the... Uh, the National Socialist Americans that were already here yeah. in America would then be like, ah, oh, yeah, we're all Nazis too. And then right. everything would just kind of like, you know, come together like this s'more right. of no Jews. Yeah. But then what happened was they got to Mexico and they were stationed, like a bunch of Nazis were stationed in like lower parts of Mexico. And that's where, if you listen to Mexican music, the the certain tone that they have with the accordion and certain things like that were influenced oh, by like German folk, polka well, ger were influenced by German music. So I think some of their ideology came from not so much that they were seen as like a lower form of man as much as they were like, you're your own men. You're right. not, you're not, you're not, us. you're not us, but you could be if you worked hard enough, right. you know, like things like that. That's, I think that's the way that they looked at it. And it's uh, like certain cultures all over the world, they see for whatever reason, white skin is like a sign of purity. And for whatever. <laughs> for whatever reason, 
I think like, do you ever hear about albino slave trade or albino, uh, albino, albino flesh trade in Africa? Wild as shit. No, they they, they just catch albinos and eat them. So, of their no, magic. no, no. They, they think they think that the skin is magic. Right. So basically, what there is, there's a huge like anybody born in Africa or most people born in Africa, Africa without albinism, they're like very coveted. And uh, there have been instances where you'll see people with albinism missing hands or feet or fingers. And yeah. it's because people think if they have, it's almost like rhino tusk. They're like, if I have some of oh, it. Oh, right. Like District 9. This will. District 9? You didn't see District 9? I mean, I did, but what are you talking about? The guy the, the guy that was like a warlord was like trying to oh, take yeah. the alien parts. And That's right. So something like that. Become an alien. So the, the thing is. They think that if they have these pieces of these these people with albinism, that they will possess either some sort of power or it's good luck, some of a mystical bullshit. So they believe. What's your friend's name? The caller, the one who just called. Yeah, I can't remember. Oh uh, well, listen, dog, find an <laughs> albino, <laughs> cut off their hand, sew it onto your friend, and maybe that'll fix him. <laughs> I think that's the best solution we've come up with yet, dude. There's no solution. The There's other, a final solution. <laughs> Get that boy in the showers. Do <laughs> you want to talk about your hug? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get around it. Do I want to talk about, yeah, do I want to talk about my above average size penis? It's above average size. Nice, dude. And it's, and it's girthy. I say the same thing. What about my penis? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say the same thing when it was bringing up. Yeah, my up? friend with the above average <clears throat> penis. Yeah, it's just and it's because we were actually just talking earlier about that show where everyone could see your wiener. What? Remember? And then like, <laughs> and then like, when was this? Tim's friend, you were on the podcast like the next week, and then Tim's friend had been talking to him like, oh, Shaner was rock hard oh but you weren't, yeah you actually just had like it was just my your pants were like really dem like displaying your my, soft my, hog yeah my soft hog yeah yeah I, those were work pants i just come from work yeah brutal and it was uh you're earning those tips huh? i definitely was trying to <laughs> like see this that's what i think what pissed people you so much off about the door that's when it's soft i think that's what made so oh, many people mad door. If they come, I don't know. Answer. I read every single comment on that business's page. Did they say anything about my wiener? Not one not, guy. Not one no, they, on the did, they, they were going to type it, but then they couldn't. They were going to type my dig up, but then they ran out of letters. <laughs> so anyway, confirmed. Anyway, yeah. I mean, Danny's. Dan, I think out of all my friends, Danny's the only one who's seen my erect penis. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's in my brain. It won't ever leave, it no matter how hard out. I try. It can't get out of your oh, brain. Wait, didn't you guys do porn together? Did Danny and I do <laughs> <laughs> I didn't earn my chops in videography. No, yeah. Danny Danny was not, Danny did not do porn with me. Danny was porn, he was caught in the, he was caught in the crossfire of porn. He was porn to Jason. He was porn to Jason, caught in the crossfire of porn. And I felt bad, I still feel bad about that. I never want anybody to see. No one's ready for a hard dick unless they're ready for a hard dick. Yeah. You know I mean? well, but better than coffee, dude. <laughs> what? It was the first thing I saw in the morning. Made you I'm shit? I'm setting up the... the <laughs> 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 right, God damn, dude. That'll fucking jar you away, <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> dude, it gave, I it gave me the jitters. that because part of me was like, I love coffee, dude. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> if... <laughs> Can I start using it about my dick? Like, yo, better than coffee. If you don't eat enough, it gives you anxiety. Yeah, I was gonna say, did my dick make you shit a whole bunch? It <laughs> gave me anxiety. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Much. Gave you the dick jitters? Damn, dude. I'm sorry. I did not. I'm sorry. That is a harsh it, it thing. It makes to... me shake, but I like it with cream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you get an iced version of my penis, it's it's pretty good. I think it's gross when it's black. too bitter for you yeah <laughs> it's got a, it leaves a bitter taste in your mouth yeah yeah uh yeah i didn't uh, i didn't mean to send danny pictures of my wiener and but they they did get there mm -hmm. and then later i had to explain to the person i had worked oh, with. oh so it wasn't in person no oh oh you well, thought you whatever. thought 
No, I thought. <laughs> I, I thought. I mean, actually, we're we're pretty close. I don't yeah, know. I was like, wait, how did you penis. think oh, that no, my no, no. wiener I came? I thought that you like were doing like photo stuff or something, uh -huh. and like had to be there while you were getting <laughs> pictures taken of your wiener. That was what I was imagining, was this First scenario. Off, please don't ever say getting pictures taken <laughs> of your wiener. That sounds so gay and exploitative. He was just getting oh, I'm sorry, you were modeling for I wasn't modeling for any, I would No, I was helping a friend out with her OnlyFans. That's what um, I was doing. I was being a good friend. Mm -hmm. I was being a good friend, and then... I got all the pictures. And then you sent it to and then Penny and you said, she, check this out. She sent them to my drive, my Google Drive. Oh. And then the Google Drives got mixed up. Mm. And then he got driven. And I feel bad about it. Is she hot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's Did great you eat looking. to it? <laughs> he deleted it too quick. Oh. Yeah. I felt bad. It, it was a redhead. Which I was like, maybe you meant this on purpose? No, I no, no. I didn't mean it on purpose. And that was the whole thing, you're too. Not, you're not trying to help her enough to plug it, though. I did. Did you? Yeah, I plugged it. When, uh, I, well, the whole thing was I didn't. I Because I had it. to, I had to like, reactivate my OnlyFans to get that done. Damn. Which was fucking lame as hell. So, guys, follow the Patreon. Follow the OnlyFans. I don't even think she does her OnlyFans anymore. Yeah. Uh, which is like. So, none of us can find it? No, I don't think so. Those are all. Those are all. So that was all, that was the whole thing. <laughs> I was that gonna was go the, find uh, yeah, fucking Shane's penis, <laughs> dude. I don't know how I'd feel if I found out one of my boys jerked off to my hard penis. Well, well, I, I, I don't know I, how I didn't I'd feel say about I was gonna it. jerk off to your what hard else? penis. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If I was gonna take screen caps and post them online and be like, guys, look, here's Shane's wiener. I don't want to spread those two Discord. Dude. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather have you jerk you off to that. I'd beat off to I'd your rather, hard dick. Then again, uh, it's hey, like, I'll do it, dude. Don't. As a dude who's had, have you ever had like a a, a dick pick go like get sent around? Have you? Has that ever happened uh, to you? Kind of. of not you? like not in a like well beyond my control. So I should say this was the second time I saw Sh Shaner's erect. Beam. When was the first time? Uh. It got sent in a girl chat. Oh and yeah, my and Jamie was like, what? "Do you think this is Shaner?" And I was like, Ooh. "Yeah, I think that's Shaner." I told you about this. I don't remember that. The girl chat. That's that's mostly how. So your wife has seen my wiener. Too. Yeah, dude, we've all seen your wiener. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in this building has He's seen your wiener. Your sex worker, it's fine. <laughs> like, yo, check this out. This what the group chat. I'm not embarrassed. I am though morally remiss. I didn't. I, I, I think was for a while in college. I was doing like turning my like drawing on my. With, that's what I did with my iPad. I was drawing. Oh yeah. My dick into characters. Sure, I've done that. Yeah, Dicasso. I was. Uh, was how, long, how long did it, did it take you to think that up? How long did you? How long did you work? I think a girl. Responded that to me when I sent it to her one time. Yeah, and I was like there it is you didn't go with Jackson Paulcock <laughs> You didn't go <laughs> with that. That seems like pretty That's good. Pretty good. That is pretty good Fuck I'm not uh, I don't know why you on the spot. I can't think of <laughs> anymore. I mean Dicasso is pretty good. Yeah Or Norman Cockwell Cock Monet Norman Cockwell. Yeah, That's pretty good Van Gerth Van Gerth Damn it, dude Damn that is yeah, pretty I'm good. I'm having trouble thinking of artists. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are job. No, yell them out. Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Salvador Smalley. <laughs> Damn. That was pretty fucking good. That is. That was pretty goddamn good. So you used to draw little doodles on your little doodle. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I'd find out that those had been shared. Well, that's different. Yeah. That's different. You were you were clearly trying to get people to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the whole thing is with that is I didn't think that my penis would be passed around like a fucking big old fat joint. Yeah. Someone was going to be putting their mouth on. I don't know that. Happens. Uh, well, what I didn't know is that one, without naming names, 
How many people were in this girl chat? Mm, I don't know. All of the ladies in South Philly. It was a big South Philly girl chat. <laughs> 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 It's just getting pasted, like posted on like Sick. Facebook moms groups. <laughs> the moms of <laughs> South Philly. I'd say most women in South Philly between the ages of <laughs> 22 and 35. Great. That's so many people to track down. Amazing. Yeah. I, I once got told by a coworker that my dick had gone, been passed around. Oof. And I didn't know I was at work. And weirdly enough, she like, we were on pretty good terms. Pretty good, you know, coworker. Yeah. And she was like, hey, can I talk to you for a second? And I was like, yeah, what's up? Yeah. She's like, don't get weird. I just think you should know. She's like, is this you? And it was a, now, it was a picture of just my full-blown yeah. dong. But if, I want, I, I could pick my dick out of the lineup. I was like, that's sure. my, that's my yeah. dick. But... The damning evidence, the reason she asked if it was me, is that the picture wasn't just of my erect penis. It was from the nose down. Oh, no. So that lady was in the gr the girl chat. Oh, that was the yeah, fucking yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, it is a, I guess it's a big group. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> in a way, it's... A, you know what? I'm flattered <laughs> in a way. In a way, I'm I'm like, all right. Because it wasn't a bad picture. Look, I wish my dick was cool enough for all of the girls in Philly to send it to what, each other. What I appreciated about the picture is you went for uh, perspective. I oh, like, I know. That's a genius Well, the, the whole thing like, was, that picture I didn't take. That wasn't me taking that yeah, picture. Yeah, unless you have the longest arms in the world. No, that picture. Uh, also, but I think both of my both of my hands you have are hands on hip. You're a big hands on hip guy. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I, that, <laughs> I, I thought you were gonna say the reason they could I tell am. is because I was standing. I'm, I'm big hands on hip guy, dude. And I'm standing yeah, there. I, I'm gonna say both times I saw your erect bird, hands on hips. Hands on hips. <laughs> it's pretty sick. I'm a hands on hips guy. You're a big presenter. I don't know why you're acting like you're. Nervous about it. It's not that I'm nervous about it. I think it's more like, you know, if I if Lost I opportunity cost is it, it, <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's like if I got a picture of like a nude of like my friend, you know, and it was a chick, mm -hmm. I'd be like, fuck. And I'd be like, the first thing I would think is not to send it to anybody else. That'd be the first thing I'd be like, yeah, if it was like a good friend of mine, I'd be like, shit. Yeah. She should probably know like what my coworker did. And she wasn't even that great of a friend. She was right. just like, hey, you should know. She that, was like, trying to flirt with you. Maybe she was. She's like, hey, I saw this and I like it. I, mean, I just want you to know that I'm looking at it. Later, we did have sex. Yeah, of course. That's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> the point is. Not really being a good friend. That was, she I, was, I was a good friend. I told you both times. Yeah, and Danny and I have never had sex. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, at all, no, dude. There's a lot of been. There's some gayness going on a lot lately. <laughs> there's been some wild ass gayness, and I won't stand for it. Not that I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if my friends are gay. I don't care if you were gay. If you were gay, I wouldn't care. All right. Well, thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I'm homophobic too. I'm not. I'm not homophobic, dude. I'm not homophobic at all, dude. Fuck. I'm not fucking homophobic. All right. Fuck you, dude. I am. I'm just saying that if 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 someone showed me a picture of your erect penis, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Yo, check this out," one, yeah. I'd be like, "Ha," huh. and then <laughs> the second, the second thing I'd do is like, "Who is that?" And they'd be like, "It's Miguel." And yeah. I'd be like, oh man, did he send you that? And like, no, it's been sending around. I would probably send you a text like, "Yo, dude, yeah, you should know that your bird is being shared." So you Full just, you've, your, your concern is that you don't trust, you can't, you can't trust anyone I'm not in control. Look, I'm not in control of my bird. Because everybody, everybody saw your penis and nobody told you. Exactly. So I'm you not, feel like you've been walking around with a big pimple on your head. Exactly. And nobody's been like, hey, you got I have a dick me sign on the back you of got, my head. You got you like know? something stuck in your tooth all day. Yeah. You've been giving important speeches and, and no everyone's just been, close everyone's to be been, like, hey, you everyone's just been chuckling. Everyone's just wow. been chuckling at my expense. Damn. Whether they've been laughing at my wiener, I don't know. 
There's nothing worse than like getting a you know someone seeing your wiener and being like, <laughs> well, that's that's the other thing that I I got quiet about because I was thinking did that happen to you? Time that well, not that it was getting laughed at, but like that a uh, girl in a sorority got a dick pic and then sent it to her friends, uh-huh. and some of them were like, nice, you should fuck him, and then some of them were like, Bleh. yuck, that's it. Oh man. Yeah, girls can be mean. I That's... I wasn't supposed to ever find out about it, but she like <laughs> I, I I meant to not talk about this. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. My I have a, a regular normal penis and it's okay. What is wrong with your penis? Mickey? Nothing. No, it's just one girl was a bitch about it and it hurt my feelings. And it hurt your feelings. Nasty fucking thing to say. Did she comment on the shaft or something? No, she's just like, oh, I thought it'd be bigger." Yeah. Seems like kind of a dickhead. That is a wild thing to say. Yeah. I thought it'd be bigger. Well, girls are nasty, dude. Sometimes it can be. I mean, I think every chick has been lying to me every now and again. Like, if they're like, oh, that's great. I'm oh, like, I think I think, I think they're lying time. right out uh, right off the gate. Yeah. Like, but I've also had one chick, she did say, she's like, that's not as big as I thought it'd be. Yeah. Which... I was like, "How dare you? Don't, don't, just don't ever say it." Just, yeah, you could I know, just I, say. I, I, I don't care if you say like, nothing. <laughs> you could just say nothing. You could just be like, ah, "Right." Hmm. I would actually know a hmm would kill me. If yeah. some girl took down my pants and was like, "Hmm," I would. Yeah, I would have to make hmm. her tell. I'd be like, "What's that about? What's what? that all about?" We don't have to do this. No, no, I'd still do it. Even right. if a chick insulted my penis to his face, I'd well, probably, then I'm into it. You'd be you're you're in, you're into the humiliation. You're into humiliation. No, probably not. That's no, why I that's I be able to now it. all the small wiener stuff really is adding up. Things. It's all adding up, dude. It's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. It's mean no matter what. Any time. It's just like anytime someone has anything critical to say, it's just gonna hurt your feelings. Like I found out. So I was on. You know, uh, Field. It's like a kink dating app. <laughs> I was. It was. I was told it was like a hookup dating app, but it's more like kink. It's it's mostly in New York. It's mostly people that are poly or ethically non-monogamous, and it's like I have a loving partner that I'm like happily primary. But with, I want to get real. But I'm looking I for wanna... someone with a you know above average cock. <laughs> and I found out that you know how like if you're below six foot on a dating app, you kind of get shafted. You found out that? No, no, no. I found out that the yeah, wait, no, tell me tell me more about it. that the corollary with dick size is D- tell me tell me seven, more is a seven inch minimum. That's news to me. And I've I never, found I've that never, out the hard way. I've never been subjected to anybody just giving me a pass because of my height. Yeah, well, you know Ever. I wasn't used to that. How's it feel? It doesn't feel good. How's Let me it tell feel? you for a girl to be like, oh, never mind. Anything sub seven is not worth my time. I'll stick with my primary partner for that. Doesn't feel good. <laughs> I'm I'm a, a bit of a five ten guy, you know? Yeah. What I wouldn't give for <laughs> what I wouldn't give for that. You know, there's nothing worse than having a woman on, so, you know, it's perfectly average. It's even above average, depending on what, you know, measurements you look at. What measurement? <laughs> Are you, you know what they say, like, yeah. the, the world average. What is the world average? Is it like... Supposedly, like, five or five and a half. That's the world average? That's what they say. That's wild. I would never have guessed that at all. The world average? That's what they say. That's... You know what? That's white supremacy. You think so? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that, I think that's just whites being like, they're you know, it's all... It's, 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 they're it's, bringing it's, it down to be like, yeah. this is actually the normal. No, this is normal. You're abnormal. Right, what, right. What you have going on is fucking weird and gross and sick. <laughs> that's fucked up. I don't know what that is. That's fucked up. Don't do that. Yeah. White guys walking around with a fucking 5.5 are like, yo, this is the way God intended it to be. Right. I'm not going to please anybody. It is. And it is. Technically. I think it's a burden having having something girthy you think so i think it is you you run into situations where you're hurting yeah yeah cool you know you can only make Whatever, someone man you can only make someone yeah vi- dude it sounds like it stinks it sounds like it's really tough for you 
<clears throat> Look, you can make you can only make someone's vagina bleed so many times. Whoa. Don't ever say something like that to me. <laughs> Don't ever look me in the eyes and say something like that. You can only make someone's vagina bleed so many times, Miguel. Damn. Until you I don't know if I can do you, the Patreon. Until you I think, think until you think there is something I think door court is canceled. Physically wrong with you. I don't I'm not comfortable being here anymore. <laughs> you know I know what it's like to be ostracized and cast out because of one's size. But what you make up for, or what you lack, just this shows. <laughs> I hate this. Look at how far you've come, but not how far you can shoot. Uh -huh. This has been the end podcast. God Brian damn it. Tanner. We're going to switch it over to the Patreon with Miguel Silva. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Or Miguel Smalva, as we sometimes call him here. Make sure you call the hotline, 833-443-5300. And we will address any comment, question, concern, or possible uh, problems with minorities you have uh, working in a kitchen. <laughs> Thank you for a very powerful The End Podcast. <laughs> Later. <laughs>